Welcome everyone to the light of Zion. The light of Zion is a God's written words. And the light of Zion will continue to shine its light to guide and to lead the chosen ones of Israel until we arrive back to Zion, our homeland. Here is the promised land. The light of Zion will continue to shine its light for the travelers of Israel who are sojourners among the nations. Shine your light, O Yahuwah. Let it lead us to your holy mountain. Shine your light, for your word is true. Shine your light, for your word is good for me. And with that, I say again, welcome to the light of Zion. It's my pleasure again to welcome you to another interesting presentation by the light of Zion. Uh, today I'm coming to you with an important discussion and this one is titled What does Yahuwah our God require from us, Israel? What does Yahuwah our God require from us? I want you to join me and follow along as we examine this uh, question and find answers that can help us to walk with our God and to serve Him in an acceptable way. So what does our God require from us, Israel? What does he want from us? Why did he bring this great calamity upon us as a people? Why are we scattered among the nations because of our error? What does our God require from us, Israel? It is a good question for us to find answer to. What does he require from us? Well, follow along as we examine what is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 7 to 10. There it is written, So for a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great mercy I will gather you back. In a flood of indignation, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting loyal love, I will have mercy upon you, says you are a purchaser, Yahuwah. So this is like in the days of Noah to me, just as I have sworn that the waters of Noah we no more cover over the earth. So, so I swear that I will no more become indignant towards you or rebuke you. For the mountains may be removed and the hills may be shaken, but my loyal love will not be removed from you, nor will my <coughs> covenant of peace be shaken says Yahuwah, the one having mercy on you. So yes, Yahuwah said, for a brief moment he abandoned us. He brought calamity upon us. He disciplined us because of our error. But he will no more do that with us. 
because he's going to have mercy upon us. So it was like in the days of Noah to him, when in his, in his anger he wiped off the, the, the every living thing of the face of the ground. But he said he's going to have mercy upon us. He said, he will not remove his covenant of peace with us. So, yes, our God is showing mercy towards us. He's turning towards us so that he can show us mercy, so that he can pardon our error, so that he can restore us as a people so that he can heal us as a people. But we need to know what does he require from us, Israel? What does he require from, what does our God require from us? In the book of Micah chapter 6 verse 8, there it is written, he has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what is Yahuwah requiring from you? He said, only to exercise justice, to cherish loyalty, and to walk in modesty with your God. So yes, the only thing our God requires from us is for us to do what is right. And what is right is for us to love our God with our heart, whole heart and with our whole mind. Yes, love Yahuwah, your God, and be loyal to Him. Stop running after other gods of the nations, serving other gods of the nations. He wants us to he wants us to serve him alone as our God and walk in a proper way with him as our God. That is what Yahuwah requires from us to do what is right. And to do what is right is to do what? To love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart and stop running after foreign gods, new ones that just came up. That is what he requires from us. But what have we done? What have we done so far, Israel? As a people, what have we done? Well, the prophet Daniel recorded this concerning us, Israel. In the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 5 to 7, there it is recorded. So we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled. And we have deviated from you, your commandments and your judgments. And we have not listened to the servants and to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in the name of our King, uh, in the name, of, in the name, in your name, in your, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name, to our kings, our princes, our forefathers, and all the people of the land. Said so to you, O oh, Yahuwah, belongs righteousness. But to us belong the shame, as in, in the case this as in the case today. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel, those nearby and those scattered far away. In all the land to which you despise them because they acted unfaithfully towards you. 
Yes, Israel, we have all sinned, all Israel, both the northern kingdom Israel and the southern kingdom Judah, all of us have sinned and have not listened to the warnings that the prophets spoke concerning in the name of our God, concerning to our prophet, to the kings and our, all the people of the land. No, we have not listened. We have all acted unfaithfully towards our God. That is what we have done, as in the case here today. That is why we still scattered among the nations. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, Paul reminded us of this when he said, For all I mean, all Israel have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is what we have done. All of us have sinned and have fall short of the glory of God. And what is the consequences of what we have done? In the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24, there it is written, and there we fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled down, trampled on by the nations until the appointed time of the nations are fulfilled. So because of our error, our people fell to the sword, to the edge of the sword. We were defeated as a people, and we were led captive as slaves among the nations. And we were scattered into all the nations, just like Yahuwah had warned us he would do. Because we are dead unfaithfully towards our God. By leaving our God to go and serve the gods of the nations and follow the nations to serve their gods. That is why he brought a great calamity upon us. That is what we have done. That is what we have done. So, what is our error that we have done? What is our error? The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 5, there it is written, Then God spoke all these words, I am Yahuwah your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So you must not have any other gods beside me. You must not make for yourself any cow for yourself a carved image or a form of any any uh, a form like anything that is in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the water under the under the earth so you must not bow down to them nor be enticed to serve them for I Yahuwah your God I am a God who requires exclusive devotion, bringing punishment for the errors of the fathers upon sons, and upon the third generation, and upon the fourth generation of those who hate me. So Israel, this is our error. We left our God and started worshipping things that are not God. Things made in images that God told us we should not make any image. We started following the nations to serve their idols. That is our error. 
it is the right time that we wake up and ask what does our God require from us. He requires that we not worship any other God or any other false gods, any other God but Him. He said we should not make any image of anything on, on the, in the heaven, on the earth, or in the, on the sea to bow down to, to them. It's time we examine ourselves. Are we complying to what our God requires from us? Or have we been misled and to continue to serve and follow the nations to serve their false gods? That is our error, Israel. That's why we are in the condition that we are in today. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64, there it is written, Yahuwah will scatter you among all the nations, from the one ends of the earth to the other ends of the earth, and there you will have to serve gods of woods and, stone, and of stone which you and your forefathers have not known. Because of our error and our unfaithfulness, it is written that Yahuwah will scatter us among the nations. And there we will be serving the gods of wood and of stone. that we have not known. So, what have we not done, Israel? What have we not done as a people? What have we not done as a people that God chose to serve him? The people that he brought out of Egypt and established us as a nation to serve him, to represent him and bear witness to him, to the other peoples of the nations what have we not done as a people? According to Daniel chapter 9, verse 10 to 13, there is written, So we have not obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our God, we have not obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our God by following his laws that he set before us through his servants, the prophets. So all Israel has overstepped your law and turned away by not obeying your voice so that you poured out on us the cause and the sworn oath written about in the law of Moses, the servants of the true God. For we have sinned against him. We has carried, we has carried out, I mean, he has carried out his words that he spoke against us and against our rulers who ruled over us by bringing great calamity on us. Nothing has been done under the whole heavens, such as what was done in Jerusalem. Just as is written in the law of Moses, all these calamities has come upon us. Yet we have not begged for the favor of Yahuwah our God, by turning away from our error and by showing insight into your truth. So Prophet Daniel recognized that till today 
all Israel as a whole have not begged for the favor of Yahuwah. Yet still today, all Israel have not begged for the favor of Yahuwah, our God, by turning away from our error and showing insight into the truth of our God. Till today, we have not as a nation, the northern and the southern tribe, all Israel, have not begged for the favor of Yahuwah, our God, by turning around from our error. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 13, there is written, For the people have not returned to the one who strike them. They have not sought Yahuwah of army. So Isaiah confirmed it also that the people, even though he brought great calamity upon us, he has been bringing calamity upon us. But she still today, Israel, we have not begged for his favor. We have not as a nation, as a people, begged for the favor of Yahuwah our God. Until we show insight and understanding to this truth and leave the gods of the nations alone and start calling on, on Yahuwah our God, we will not do what is right and what is required of us by our God. We have to show insight, understand what our error is. We left our God and we have gone to have been following and calling on the gods of the nations, the gods that the nations gave to us. Some of us even forgot of who they are, their root, their origin, and have taken into, have taken the identity of other nations. And join the other nations to call and serve the false gods of the nations. Until we show insight into into this truth, we will never do what is right by our God. But when we understand and pay attention to what our God is saying, that we left Him to go and serve the gods of the nations, then we can be able to turn around and do what is right by our God. So what have we not done, uh, Israel as a people, what have we not done in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 3, is written, O oh, Yahuwah, do your eye not look for, what, for faithfulness? You struck them, but it made no impact on them. You exterminated them, but they refused to accept discipline. They made their faces harder than a rock, and they refuse to turn around. That is what we have not done in Israel. Although our God struck us, although He disciplined us, He said it made no impact on us. Even though He has terminated us out away from the land of Israel, 
say it made no impact on us, but we refuse to accept discipline. In fact, some of us made our faces harder than a rock, and they refuse to turn around. And many of us still today refuse to turn around, but we we'll keep following the people of the nation to serve the gods of the nations. That is what we have not done in Israel as a people. That is turn around, accept discipline of our God so that he can show us mercy. Even though he struck us, he scattered us and exterminated us from the land, we have not refused to accept discipline. Both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel. That's why we are still scattered among the nations today. Because as a people, we have not begged for the favor of Yahuwah, our God. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said this to the people in Judea before the destruction or before the extermination of Israel from the land. Peter said this to the people of Israel. Peter said to them, Repent and let one, each one of you be baptized in the name of Yahushua, who was translated to become Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the free gift of Holy Spirit. So Peter told the people of Israel, Repent, turn around, show remorse, accept discipline so that your sins can be forgiven. But the people of Israel did not repent. The people of Judah did not repent. And that's why Yahuwah carried out the judgment that he has foretold long ago that he scattered Israel away from the land that he gave to our forefathers. What we have not done is to repent all of us as a nation and the people of as a nation and people of Israel, the sheep of God's pasture both the northern kingdom Israel and the southern kingdom Judah have not repented of our error since our scattering. Yet since our scattering, both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, we have not repented of our error. But some of us made their uh, made their Faces, their faces harder than a rock. They refuse to accept discipline. That's why we are still in this condition that we are in. So a good question is this. What must we all do before it is too late? What must we all do before it is too late? In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen, there it is written: <clears throat> "If my people, on whom my name has been called, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their evil ways." Then I will hear from the heavens and forgive their sins and heal their land. 
So it is written that if my people, Yahuwah said if his people, if we can do what humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, instead of hiding our faces, we should humble ourselves, accept our error, and seek the face of our God and pray and beg for forgiveness of our error as a nation and a people. He said he will hear from heaven and he will forgive our sins and he will heal our land and he will restore us. But we need to do what? Do this before it is too late. We should stop hardening our faces. We should stop following the nations to serve their false gods. Humble ourselves and repent and seek Yahuwah our God. In the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 to 7 there is written, For I am Yahuwah, I do not change, and you are, the, you are sons of Jacob, you have not come to your finish. From the days of your forefathers you have turned aside from my regulations, and have not kept them. Say, return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahuwah of armies. But you say, you say, how are we supposed to return? So Yahuwah said, we have not, he has not changed. He is still the same. He is still our God. Okay, and we the sons of Jacob have not come to a finish. At least we're still alive. He has not given to us what we deserve. Don't forget the consequences of our error is death. But he has not given to us what we deserve. He's still long-suffering towards us as a nation and as a people. So he said we should return to him and he will return to us. We should seek for him and return to him. We should do what is right which is leave the gods of the nations alone and start calling on Yahuwah, the God of Israel, and seek for his word and instruction so that we can return to him. He said, if we return to him, he will return to us as a people. But will you listen? In the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 2, 1 and 2, it is written, So come and let us return to Yahuwah, for though he has torn us to pieces, he will heal us. He struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will, heal, he will revive us after two days, after two days. And on the third day he will raise us up and we will live before him. Yes, the prophet Hosea said that we should do what? Seek to return to our God. Return to calling on the name of our God. Return to seeking only our God. Stop following the gods of the nations. Seek for Yahuwah through the things written by the prophets. Search for him through the books, his laws. 
He said, though he struck us for two days, he, will punish. he said he will punish us for two days, but he will raise us up on the third day. But would you listen and return to searching and calling on the name of your God? Or would you continue to harden your face like stone and keep following the nations? So we must separate ourselves from the nations, from their gods that they have given to us and start calling on the name of Yahuwah our God before his final judgment come upon us. Yes, before his final judgment come upon us, we must do what? Separate ourselves from the nations and start seeking for our own God, Yahuwah. We have been serving gods in the image of the other nations. We have been serving God in the image of the other nations. But we need to start seeking for Yahuwah, our God. To call upon him, to search for him through the things written by the prophets. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21, there is written, And everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah will be saved. Everyone who lived gods of the nations and start calling on Yahuwah will be saved from the final judgment that is coming. Would you listen? Would you pay attention? Yes, everyone who listens and return to calling on the name of Yahuwah, searching for our God, for mercy, will be saved on the day of his final judgment. Everyone who return to calling the name of Yahuwah will be saved. They will not be affected by the final judgment. Only those who harden their faces and refuse to turn around are the ones that will be consumed or destroyed by the final judgment that is coming from our God. So what must we do before it's too late? The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2 to 3 there is written. So before the decree take effect, before the day passes by like chaff, before the burning anger of Yahuwah comes upon you, so before the day of Yahuwah's anger come upon you, Say, so seek Yahuwah, all you meek ones of the earth, who observe his righteous decrees. Those of you paying attention to what is written, say, seek Yahuwah before it's too late. Say, so seek righteousness and seek meekness. Probably you will be concealed on the day of Yahuwah's anger. So before this day of his judgment come, the day of his final judgment come, before it comes, he said we should return to seeking and searching for our God. Probably you will be spared if you do. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 it's written, Because you kept the words of about my endurance, I will also keep you from the hour of, fire of, the hour of test, which is to come upon, all the, upon the entire inhabited earth, to put to test those dwelling on the earth. Those of you that will listen and we turn around and start seeking for Yahuwah. So those who have kept the word about his endurance, 
So he will keep you from the hour of test, which is to come upon all the entire inhabited earth. This hour of test is coming, and all the people dwelling on earth will be put to test. Yes, those who paid attention to what is written and have endured will be preserved during the coming hour of test upon the earth. It is a test about who is it is a test as to who will live and who will be put to death. It is called the hour of thirst. God will examine the inhabitants of the earth as to who will live and who will be put to death. Those who have taken time to search for their God, to call upon the name of the true God and leave the false gods of the nations alone, will be preserved alive. But the rest will be put to death by the judgment. It is the hour of test as to who will live and who will be tempted to death. So this is what we must do before it is too late. That is, leave the gods of the nations alone and start searching and seeking for Yahuwah, the God of Israel, and calling upon his name for mercy and for preservation. Uh, concerning Yahuwah's final judgment that is coming upon the earth, in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 21 to 23 it is written, Only a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, O Israel, are as the grain of the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. An extermination has been decided on, and justice will engulf them. Yes, the extermination decided on by the Sovereign Law, Yahuwah of armies, will be carried out in the entire land. So Yahuwah has already made the decision. He's going to spare only a remnant. The rest of the people of Israel will be exterminated because of the error of the people of Israel. But will you be among the few that will turn around and do what is right and start calling on the name of Yahuwah before it's too late so that you can be preserved alive from the final judgment? because it is coming. He said only a remnant will return. The rest will be exterminated in all the entire earth. In the, all the entire land, this judgment will be executed. In the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 10 is written, There will die by the sword all the sinners of my people those who are saying the calamity will not come near or reach us. So yes, all who are thinking that this calamity or God will not carry out what he said he's going to carry out, so they will all be put to death. They will all die by the sword. So if you are of the ones hardening your faces, thinking that this will not happen. Consider what he has done before. He scattered Israel away from the land, promised land. That tells you that he will still do what he said he will do. If he did what he did, that means he's going to do what he said he's going to do. So it's time for us to turn around 
and do what is right so that we can live. In the book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 there is written, For look, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the presumptuous ones and all those practicing wickedness will become like stubble. So they, the coming day will certainly devour them. Yes, Yahu, says Yahuwah of armies, and I will, it will leave them with neither root nor branch. But on you who honor my name, the Son of Righteousness will shine with healing in his rays, and you will skip about like a fattened calf, and you will tread the wicked underfoot, for they will be like dust under the sole of your feet on the day when I take action, says Yahuwah of armies. So Yahuwah has said it that there is a day coming, the day of his final judgment, when all the presumptuous ones, those who are thinking that this will not happen, they will become like what? Stubble. They will be consumed. And all those practicing wickedness will all become like stubble. So the coming day will devour, devour them. And it will leave them no root no branches to continue to carry on their rebelliousness. So that is Yahuwah's final judgment that is going to come, that is coming. But you can avoid calamity. You can avoid this second death. If you do what is right by your God. So, in conclusion, what does Yahuwah require from us? What does our God require from us? He wants us, Israel, to repent and turn and return to calling on Him as our God. He wants us to leave the false imitation gods given to us by the nations alone and return to Him. He wants us to live and have a good future. Yahuwah God wants, us, wants to restore us as His people and establish His kingdom with us and dwell with us forever. That is what he wants to do. That is what he wants to accomplish. But first, we have to do what? Do what is right by turning around, by returning to calling on the name of Yahuwah our God, by seeking for his mercy, by repenting as a people, as a nation. Those who listen will be among the remnant that will return to the mighty God. The rest will be exterminated as is written. So again, thank you for giving attention and listening to the light of Zion. Uh, I hope this presentation is enlightening to you so that you can know of what your God requires from you, of what your God is doing, of what your God is waiting for you to do, of what your God is expecting or requiring from you. Until I come to you with another topic, remain blessed and keep seeking Yahuwah until He shows you mercy and chooses you among the ones that will be preserved alive. Thank you.